Hi, my name is Morten Jensen and welcome to the NBA show. And today we'll be discussing off guards who were gunners, who might now be passers and they might be better. Yeah, that's a convoluted way of saying things, but nevertheless, that's the subject. Stay tuned. All right, you know the term gunners, scorers, chuckers, like guys who just get buckets, right? Bucket getters. Like we have this perception of them that that's the only thing they can do. And here I'm talking about guys like Zach Levine and Donovan Mitchell. But did we ever stop for a second to think about sometimes how their you know teammates, the caliber of teammates that they have, actually determine their value on the court as well? You know, we're seeing a guy like Zach Levine right now becoming way more of a playmaker. Like he's making passes we've never seen before. And a big part of that is just having a good coach on the sideline instead of having Jim Boylan. It's also having you know veterans playing in the right roles, having a new veteran, Garrett Temple, for example, that just allows him to be more creative and feel more secure with the basketball instead of always having to play with rookies and young players who are just not accustomed to running an offense. At the same time, Donovan Mitchell, who I just brought up as well, is having a similar effect in Utah. The Utah Jazz right now is basically are running through the league. They're, they're a powerhouse. And one of the reasons that they are is because we're seeing passes from Donovan Mitchell that were never seen before. He is like on the right side of the court making one-handed home run passes to the left side corner and just doing a marvelous job of setting up teammates. In fact, the Utah Jazz is one of the league's best three-point shooting teams this year. The Chicago Bulls is a result of Levine's evolution and the fact that he's playing with, with teammates who can now contribute offensively are one of the best offensive teams in the league. And I think ultimately it boils down to when you can pass as well as score, when you can balance those two things, it just takes your game to a whole other level. And that's why we need to stop always cementing guys as bucket getters. Because sometimes they are forced to be in situations where they play with certain teammates that aren't up to the task of taking on a vast offensive role, thus necessitating the fact that they need to shoot a lot. And when you are forced to take 20-22 shots per game and be the whole offensive engine for your team, you know what? You're not going to have the energy to make those extra passes. You're not going to have the necessary court vision to assert yourself as a playmaker because you're being asked to score. That's your number one, second and third priority. That's what you're basically paid to do for a couple of years. Like go get, go get a scores, go get 25 per game, go get me 31 in this game. We need it. You know, that just forces the issue for some players. But as soon as those type of guys gets more help, you can actually see that they scale back that offensive burden. They start to become more nuanced, more refined. They start passing the basketball. They start to learn how to utilize the defensive attention that they're getting. Oh, I'm getting double teamed right at the elbow? Well, that means someone is open. Maybe that guy in the corner, maybe I should pass him the ball because that makes sense now. I'm not forced to you know, have to take this contested fadeaway over two defenders. I can actually make that pass now because we have plenty of offensive weapons on our roster. It gives you a sense of security that you haven't had before. So I, I kind of want to point this out because I think we get stuck on reputation a lot. Like again, I'm this is really a Zach Levine and Donovan Mitchell oriented video because those two guys, while they were so busy scoring, the biggest knocks on those guys were that they couldn't pass and they couldn't defend. In Mitchell's case, in particular, the defense was always just a horrible, horrible argument against him because at Louisville, he was a plus defender. He was just thrown into a system where he had to score 20 plus points from his rookie season on and onwards. Now that he's actually having so much help, just in terms of Mike Conley, Bojan Bogdanovic, even Royce O'Neal, who's not a high volume scorer, but a very capable shooter, and Jordan Clarkson coming off the bench, it just allows him more freedom and more energy to assert himself defensively and as a team-oriented passer. Guess what? He's good at both. And for Zach Levine, who was just, he was a god-awful on defense for many years. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say that he had a great defensive reputation when he was at UCLA. He didn't. But if we're being honest, he's actually playing okay defense this year. 
he is no longer in the bottom half of the league when it comes to defenders. Like, he's pretty decent right now. He's learned how to use his athleticism to affect the defense end of the court. In large part because he ha doesn't have to play the role of the be-all scorer. What's really ironic though, is that he's averaging more points than ever and doing so way more efficiently than ever before. And with Donovan Mitchell, it's kind of the same thing, even though he's not scoring at nearly as high as clip as he used to. But when you look at how he's building processions and how he's executing offensive sets, there's no way this guy couldn't average 30 if he damn well wanted to, and easily. I think it's time we break up with the idea that players are what they are when they're you know under 25 years old. It's a ridiculous premise. We're talking about guys who are so young that they still have oodles of potentials, potential left. And yet we burden them with these, this mindset that they are going to be certain things. One of the worst things a player can get a rep as is a bad defender. That rep never goes away. A guy can literally go from being a non-defender to being a plus defender. And somehow, fans all across the world will still label that guy as a bad defender because that was the early reports. And yet, I find this hilarious. A guy like Russell Westbrook, for example, who came into the league with a great defensive reputation, he's not a good defender in the NBA. Like, at all. He hasn't been for at least eight years. He spent so much time just throwing himself into rebounds and trying to gather assists and scoring 30 that the defense just got put on a shelf somewhere. Yet, everyone seems to think he's a great defender. It's being brought up constantly. So we need to be fair. One thing is, don't let a certain reputation sit on a player. That goes both ways. If a guy has a defensive reputation, even though he's not a defender, let's remove that as well. And let's add it to the guys who actually deserve it. It's time we're fair. It's time that we're actually being honest with the type of players that are running around in the league that we love. So let's begin to actually make concerted effort to keep us ourselves updated on where guys are in their development. Otherwise, we're just screaming into the void for no reason, and that's super dumb.